If you're just tuning in, this is PLOS Politics. A post-mortem analysis of the 2019 general elections has documented how the collision process of the election results by INEC was thick, chaotic, vulnerable to manipulation, and in some locations, violently disrupted. The report was made public on Thursday by the Center for Democracy and Development, that's CDD. And uh, we'll be talking about that right now. I have with me two guests in the studio. Um, we have joining us for the first time, Dr. Chung or Larry Bigbe, political analyst. Thanks for joining us. And Thanks of course, we have me. still remaining from the last session that Baba Shola Adegui, uh, political analyst as well. Pleasure to have you both to join us sure. for this part. The report highlighted quite a number of things. So we don't have enough time to analyze all of them. We'll just start with the very basic. And one of the things that stood out for me was the report that some of the staff, ad, ad hoc staff or um, those that are called INEX staff, lacked adequate knowledge of the right procedure for result collation. And some of them were also said to not have adequate basic arithmetic skill to do this. Is it possible for us to address this by looking at the educational qualification or trying to recategorize um, the level of qualification required to be an ad hoc staff? Let me start with you. Mm, yes, uh, arithmetic ability. It's all about, you know, guy go, garbage in, garbage out. You see, INEC itself did not particularly, you know, engage competent people. That's the very first one. No, it's not about me. You don't expect somebody that does not know arithmetic or calculation to do, to give you anything, you know. You see, so you have to get the right, you know, the um, competent level of people that you need to do all these kind of things, no? Your thoughts? Well, um, number one, I will blame INEC. Okay, don't let me say I will blame INEC. We should ask some questions. Were they given adequate training? Uh, INEC, actually, you, they've repeatedly said they've done training and all of that, but it doesn't seem to be enough. So what, what we're looking That's, at in this conversation today is solution to some of these issues that were raised. Yes. But of course, you can dispute the legibility of them. Number two, were they provided with adequate tools for them to do. The arithmetic is about plus. It's no multiplication in this case. And those that were, uh, they were the ad hoc officers. Who were the NYC? Graduates, even some civil servants. If, if Heine comes out to say, oh, we actually provided all these things, then that is enough evidence to tell people that the education sector is rotten. You get is enough evidence because you cannot provide me with calculator, you cannot provide me with laptop or computer to input the figure. I think that was some of the allegations that was made as well. But if you also look at that report, they said aside from these people that are unable to do basic arithmetic, there is also those that deliberately miss. I mean, didn't follow due procedure to. Uh, collate results as should be, as is written down. They knew the right thing to do, but they chose not to do it. What should be INEC's response to this? Since INEC is aware, if, that is if INEC is aware, I don't see any reason why INEC should not bring such people to book. What punishment have they given to them or this way? If, they are, if INEC is aware, have they actually done interview, to uh, interview, interrogate them, sorry, to interrogate them, have they actually gone out to do the necessary investigation? What position or what have they been able to do to punish these people? Nothing. Remember, most of the times I look at what is happening during our election, the Ijesha road where some hoodlums went to attack the voters, burnt them. Up to now, none of them has been arrested. And we have police officers there. And we know these people. Everybody can see the pictures on. So sometimes, deliberation could be as a result of, number one, the person you are loyal to. Number two, what has happened behind the door. But can INEC actually control this kind of situation? You see, I think we should just call it spade a spade. These guys are compromised from Jump Street. 
You see, we don't have any fear of free election in Nigeria. From John Street, they are from the moment you start doing voter registration, you know what I mean, where you're going to see um, an, an, a catchment area where they're not going to give them their cards, you know what I mean. They are compromised, you know what I mean. They are really, really compromised. That's, that's the basic thing. It's not about uh, arithmetic now. They know these things now, you know, but well, you see, they have been bought over. We know what happens. I contested for Senate, Lagos Central. They have been bought over. Okay, the, 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 the idea of this conversation, we all know some of the lapses. The essence of this report is so INEC can identify areas that they can implement. And over the, over the month since the election, we'll all agree here that INEC has been doing, you know, some sort of gathering, meeting with people, asking stakeholders what happened and stuff. And this is part of the process, right? So one of the uh, reports, again, that uh, talked about the lack of adequate logistics. Um, Annex said they provided money to get things as basic as electric lantern yeah, in some of these places. But the observers, according to this report, said th these things were not available as, as at those places when they went there. I did speak to um, the commissioner for edu uh, voter education, um, Osaze. He said that outsourcing is not something you know, that will make a whole lot of sense uh, at this point because of the complications that we got, um, we've gone through. But seeing as it is, logistics was a big issue. It led to the election being postponed. We still know that even at the last minute, materials were still not being delivered or they were inadequate for these officials. So should INEC consider maybe, uh, is it an option, let me ask, um, outsourcing you know, some of these logistics so that they will defray some of their challenges. No, go ahead. Um, for outsourcing, personally, I'm not against it. Mm -hmm. As long as you are outsourcing and you are doing it rightly. Nobody that can, nobody we are going to make use of that is, has no possibility of compromising if he wants to compromise. If you like, let it be within high neck. We still have some high neck officers that will compromise, that will ensure those things are not available for the purpose, and nobody will ask questions because there are some people behind who wants to gain something for it. Okay. So for outsourcing, for me, INEC has that option. And I will also support it because what means or what it meant during that election shows that INEC did not have enough hands to do the necessary things that, it, that requires uh, logistics. So they need more hands. I'm not talking... I'm not saying they should employ more hands. But, but, but there is a lot of argument against outsourcing, to be honest. Uh, when I had that conversation with him, he talked about uh, some of the... And they sounded legitimate. So outside of outsourcing, what other options are available to manage the logistics challenges that come with election coordination? Let me take that to you. This is a project. You see, it's all about you know, project management. You see, I'm not into outsourcing. You see, INEC itself did not do any dry run before the elections. You see, I mean, you have four years to do all these things. I mean, you, it's, it's a process. I mean, it's a, we call it project management. Okay, you give me, I mean, I want to manage a project. I have to know, I mean, I, I got to test run. You don't do any test run. You just come and think, oh, you have this, theoretically, you have this one in place, this one in place, and on election day, you have chaos. Okay, uh, something else that was talked about um, was the issue of insecurity and violence during the election. In, in some areas, it was more prominent. In others, it wasn't so much. The peculiar nature of river state uh, politics comes into play. We had this tussle for supremacy among the political uh, gladiators in that area. And this was one of the challenges uh, that was identified um, by the report. Is INEC able to deal with the reverse situation or there should be an outside solution to create the enabling environment for INEC to actually operate successfully in reverse states? Well, for reverse states, INEC has a responsibility because whenever it is time for election, INEC is the head as at that time. Everybody is expected to report to INEC. But unfortunately, in this country, 
because I am a member of Nigerian Army, I will not report to Heineck because I have gone and I can do whatever I like. What the president, maybe the National Assembly can look into the law and ensure the security forces always give the report to Heineck. But that does not mean that what will happen will not still happen. We have always known that River State has been a volatile state for a very long time, right from the 2007. And they have been killing even up to now that I'm talking to you. What they should have done before election, during that election, the president or whosoever could have intervened in the problems in that state. But I cannot do that. Most of the killings, most of the fightings or whatever that happened in River State was not because of the election. It was because of the personal interest of some gladiators who we all know are there and everybody is keeping quiet as if not. How many times has the president talked about killings in the River State? How many times has the chief of defense staff said anything about River State? The chief of army staff, everybody is quiet. All they know about is to send battalion to River State and start arresting those that need to be arrested. So there has to be a political solution before we can address the security situation. Let me come to you, sir. Um, the other issue that was raised was the, the relative ease with which election was held in places that were seen to be volatile uh, in the north, places like Bornu, Adamawa, that there seem not to have been um, collation challenges uh, in those areas. Even Kanu, Katsina, Klatu also did not record any collation um, incidents. What could be responsible for the relative peace we had up in some states in the north and then in the south, we had the situation with river states where lives were lost as well. What could be responsible for this? And how can we maybe copy some of the techniques that was applied there to prevail in the areas that are volatile? Mm, there are no techniques. You see, in politics, in election time, you rig where you're popular. You suppress where you think you're not going to get votes. You know what I'm saying? So like, let's go back to river state now. You see, when there's no deterrent, people act with impunity. In River State, specifically, Abishi came with federal might. So he was ready to run anybody out of town. But uh, fortunately for Wiki, you know, who is Amichi's boy, you know, they come from the same setting, so they know themselves. You know? So there was a kind of balance of terror there, you know what I mean? It was very, very embarrassing for our election in Nigeria. You see, then you're talking of um, Bono and all those places where you have a... Um, IDP and Boko Haram, and they are telling me you are returning one million votes. And one, it's all abracadabra. You know? it's, it's, you know, let's, that's what it is. Abracadabra, you know? Nigeria. That's, that's what it is. Okay, um, let's look at uh, another area still um, on that report. Um, it had to do with our, us, the media, basically. Um, the report alluded to the fact that there were limited access for media houses and media personalities, observers even, to get access to some of these coalition centers. And they are saying that this lack of observers and, you know, allowing media to get into these places could have, you know, e e escalated some of the, you know, misconduct that was experienced and impunity that was experienced across the country. And they are suggesting that the INEC and government should ensure that media get more access uh, to this place. Do you agree that it will undermine the success of INEC if there is not adequate reportage? Why deny media access to coalition? It's because they know once media is present there, there is high possibility for a lot of secrets to be leaked out. That's number one. Number two is because they know that once the media is there, there, were, uh, there will be a lot of fighting in-house, most likely among two political parties that they do not want such to be reported. But the media has the right to us assess to be present where the people cannot be. What's the essence of our freedom of information that was passed? In other words, there are some things you guys are covering up 
that you don't want to ex you don't want the people you don't want it to get exposed to the people. But no state as you mentioned. Yeah, Bono, Adamawa, and Yobe. Bono, there Adamawa, were, there was and not much issues with collation. There was not much issue with collation. Why? Because election, I doubted, actually held in those states. The reason is this. On the day of election, if you remember very well, a governor, a deputy was attacked on his way to, uh, to the polling booth. Then, number two, a day or two days to that period, and Bono State was attacked. And I'm always sure that whenever, for the past how many days that we have this book around of 18, we have always been having attack on election days. So I can say categorically that I doubt it if actually election held in those states. All right, uh, I'm told we have one minute to go, so I'll, take, I'll put the last question to you. In all of this, the major thing was the problem with collation, um, inadequate knowledge of procedures by um, INEC staff and access to media, uh, among other sundry issues. They are saying that INEC must address this issue. Going forward, do you see positive action being taken to address some of these, all the issues we've highlighted and has been highlighted in this result? Do we have the will? Will we see a change? And what, how do we get there? Yes, we're going to see a change down the road, you see. But right now, INEC, is it truly independent? It's, it's, it's a major question, you see. You see because, like, the government in power, you know, will always do anything to retain power. So they're going to, I mean, lean on, hey, who, who's going to appoint the INEC chairman? Start from there, you know? So you there have to, to be fundamental yes, changes. Yes, there have to be serious, fundamental, volcanic, you know, <laughs> structural changes for this thing to be so, able to why? move on. <laughs> Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming on the program tonight. Pleasure to have you and Thanks your so contributions. Much. We appreciate it. Well, I'll take a short break for our plus packages. And when we return, I'll be giving my take. Do stay with us. logistics planning, interference by security agencies, and poor training of staff for the 2019 general election take center stage as the Center for Democracy and Development, CCD, released its findings on world-level collation for the 2019 general elections. The report, which was released at the CCD's conference in Abuja, with a theme, Election and Collation Process in Nigeria, taxed the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to improve on challenges witnessed during the last election, especially at world level, and ensure future polls are transparent and credible. Management of logistics is very, very key, especially when you are talking in terms of uh, collision uh, process. Logistics from the ad hoc staff who are putting together all these results to ensure that they have they have made uh, comfortable enough, they have transportation to take them to the collation um, center, to ensure that they have lightning so that they are able to properly collate, that they are not even fatigued while doing this. And everything that is actually provided for in terms of security gets to them and all electoral materials are adequate at that point. But what is also very important is that the rules should actually be clear and follow when it comes to INEC. The rules should be clear and follow. We have to know what exactly, how the process are people meant to go directly from the polling unit to the ward level, from the ward level to the local government level, state level, and pres um, in the presidential election, we come to the presidential coalition center. One should not actually be jumped in favor of the order or things will quickly done when people do not even know what this process really are. It is not timely done. It allows for a lot of manipulations or perception of manipulations to be gleaned from the process. Now, what is also very important is also the fact that in the last election, we witnessed a lot of intimidation of coalition staff, observers, and media by the security agencies, political parties, our talks as well. In order to have a level playing field and we have what we call free, fair and credible elections, this is something that must stop and it must not even rear its head up 
ahead in the Kogi and the Bayesa and other off-cycle elections before we get to the 2023 yes. election yes. itself. Uh, now, one of the major issues is that the ad hoc staff should be well trained. They should be aware of their responsibility to the Nigerian people. They should be aware of their responsibility to a free, fair, and credible election. And two, the coalition system should be made more transparent, should be open to media. Because as a fourth state of the room, it's supposed to protect the interest of the people. They should be made open. Because there's nothing, it's not a secret service or secret court arrangement. What people have cast at the polling unit should be the representation of the people's wish and aspiration for those who represent them at the level of governance. So that should be made as transparent as possible. And then when it comes to logistics, I think INEC should have learned from the shortcomings of the general election. And they should be able to put up very tight and very, um, how they call it, uh, acceptable logistical arrangement that will protect the distribution of those material, both sensitive and non-sensitive material, to their destination on time. So that no election in the, in the state should be left on, um, postponed, on, except everything should be heard on the day that is stipulated. The issues can be addressed. Uh, one major thing they said was that the performance of the art rock staff were engaged at that level. I think we can, we can improve on that uh, and then do double checks to make sure that what they actually collect is what is. Like in some cases, the results that shouldn't have been declared were declared because the staff didn't know that's what was supposed to have done. Perhaps sometimes, maybe deliberately. But of course, we can do some double check to make sure that those things don't occur again. Journalists across the country have attended various gatherings at the instance of the Independent National Electoral Commission to review the conduct of the 2019 elections. They've also had reviews with uh, stakeholders. Our next National Commissioner and Chairman, Information and Voter Education Committee, Festus Okoye, has repeatedly assured Nigerians that the Commission would continue to study and analyze all the recommendations made and implement those that can be implemented administratively while working with relevant stakeholders to as effecting fundamental reforms in the electoral legal framework. While I am not a spokesperson for INEC, it is apparent to me that they are showing a willingness to improve, and for that, they deserve commendation. They should be supported by the government and people of Nigeria, and my guests on the program have shared some useful suggestions towards tackling and evolving a more refined electoral process. It is hoped that these will, along with the many others by various stakeholders, be considered for implementation. And that's our program for today. Thanks for watching. Be safe and enjoy the weekend. Bye for now.